This is our newest class and pattern from Quilted Frog and we think you will really love to make it. It's very beautiful and it has some techniques that maybe are new to you. We're going. It uses punch needle to get this beautiful texture and then we're also going to use some very simple paper piecing to get these really nice sharp points and both of those are really simple techniques that we can show you how and so in this video we're going to show you how to do the punch needle part and when you start to punch needle it's kind of a little strange because you're going to work from the back of the fabric but we have um, if you get your kit from us or you buy the embroidery file then on the front you can put your appliques but on the back it will look like this when you get started because there will be a stabilizer on there. So the first thing to do is to get the stabilizer off and the nice thing about this tear away paper is it tears off very easily it can be helpful to have a little tool, um, some kind of a stiletto or sometimes I use a uh, sizzle handle, scissor handle forceps to get that off but that's the first step is to get the paper off so um, I'll do that and then I'll come back and show you how to punch it. So now we've got all the paper stabilizer picked off and before you start there's one other thing I would suggest that you do because punch needle fabric, the fabrics you punch needle on are usually kind of loosely woven so it's a good idea to finish the edge. So I used my serger and went around the cut edges but you could just zigzag or even just fold under a quarter of an inch and sew it down. Once you've done that then we're ready to put the fabric into our hoop. For this <clears throat> excuse me this project you will need a 14 inch hoop because you need to have space for the whole design to fit in here. With punch needle, unlike regular embroidery, you can't put the uh, some of the part you've worked into the into the edge of the hoop. So once you get that tightly on there, then you can stretch it and make sure everything is very snug. You want to get it as taut as possible and this is one reason why you want to have the edge finished with the sewing machine is because you're going to pull on it a lot. Now notice how this line is now crooked. I want to make sure when I'm pulling this that I keep those lines as straight as possible. So you kind of pull against one side and then the other this square that's around the outside really doesn't have anything to do with the design. It's there for when you're ready to make your punch needle panel into the quilt you know where to trim it to fit in the quilt so that is just a guideline for you. You'll notice that we have stitched this with a dark colored thread so that it shows up because that's our pattern to work with. Okay, so once you've got it in your frame, you're ready to go. Alright, so now let's kind of look at our supplies and our tools. Um, this is the punch needle and there are lots of different kinds of punch needles and they all will work for the project so if you have one 
that's uh, good. If you don't, you can, we have one we recommend, which is this one. And this one is nice because you can adjust where the needle is. So the punch needle has a, a sharp needle that has a slanted edge and a hole through it just like a regular needle. It looks a lot like a very large sewing machine needle except that it's hollow all the way through so we can put thread through the needle and then through the hole. So this is our main tool. It's good to have some scissors, little scissors, and then little scissors like this that can cut at a 90 degree angle. And then you also need your needle threader, which I hope you can see that, <laughs> is a little wire. And they nicely come with these little white tabs on them because otherwise you would never be able to find them when you lay them down. And then you have uh, different kinds of threads. So these are some of the colors we're using in this. Um, we're also using in this pattern some number five pearl cotton, which I've got onto a, a Swift so that I can pull it off. What we're doing with this project is everything will be done either with a single strand of pearl cotton or with all six strands of embroidery floss. So we're not separating any floss. That makes it a little easier, especially if you're a beginner and don't want to get floss tangled up. Now, we have found that uh, you want to have a fairly long piece of thread, but you also don't want to have it too long. So if you were to, this uh, mat here is 24 inches wide, so when I'm cutting threads, I just take it and go from one side to the next twice so that my thread is about 48 inches long. That's a good amount. If you get too much shorter than that, you have to re-thread the needle so often that it's not fun. And if you get much less than that, I mean much longer than that, it tangles up. So now I'm ready to thread my needle. I'm going to set this on a level three and that's just telling how long the loops are going to be. That's kind of, uh, if you have other kinds of punch needles, that's just a medium loop. So <clears throat> I'm going to take the wire needle threader and stick it down like this all the way through the punch needle and then you'll see it come out down here. Then I'm going to put my thread in there. This works just like those little needle threaders that you use to thread sewing needles. And then we'll pull it back out. So now that I've got the thread through the through the punch needle, I have to thread the eye of the punch needle. And if you can see, the thread is coming out I'm like this, and I'm going to go in from behind the thread through the eye of the needle, and then I'll put my thread into my needle threader again, which is sometimes easier to say than do, and pull that through. Now I'm ready to start punching. I'm also going to pull it to where there's just about an inch and a half of thread sticking out. Now if when you get started and things aren't working right, most likely your mistake is that you forgot to thread the eye of the needle. So I'm going to look here at the finished project and I'm going to punch this part right here. You can see that's the same color of thread. So we're going to punch this little bit along the ground. And you'll notice that this is backwards. The, the little cactus is over here on the left where on the finished picture it's on the back, I mean on the right. That's because we're working from the back of the project. So it's important that you don't 
get this extra thread caught on something you don't sit it you lean your arm on it or get it around the the screw on your on your uh, frame because anything it's caught on will keep it from feeding evenly and freely through the needle now as you're doing this there are two things to remember you have to work with the needle perpendicular to the cloth or straight up and down plus this angled side of the needle has to be facing the direction you're stitching so that's real easy to see right now because it's the opposite direction of what this thread is coming out of here but once you start stitching that will be a little harder to tell and it doesn't really matter if you do a little area and then do another little area or if you go all the way across and back because the threads all blend in and it works out okay either way so I'm going to start maybe do this section right here so that it doesn't get out of the view of the camera and I'm going to do this little part right here so I push this down and I leave this thread just hanging there then I bring it up and this is important too is don't go high off the surface of the fabric you're going to stay close to the surface of the fabric and you're only going to move ahead a little bit just about the diameter of the needle so with this it's less than an eighth of an inch okay so if I was stitching this my for my own project not just to show you I would probably have started at the one edge and gone all the way to the other side of the area but it doesn't matter you really can do very small areas or big long areas so I've punched along a little ways and then it's a good idea to check and make sure am I getting loops underneath so that's what it should look like underneath it should be those little loops of thread under there and the first row is going to look kind of funny because they don't have any other loops to hold them in place so they'll flip back and forth so we'll go a little bit farther and then I'm ready to turn and go back the other way and the easiest way to make sure your needle doesn't get mixed up and going the wrong way is turn your hoop not your needle so I didn't change my needle I'm going to come up and take one little stitch that way so I can get back a little farther away from it I'm going to make sure my thread is not under my hand and then I'm going to start going back and I go very close to where I was it's this getting close together in the rows that makes the loops or the stitches stand up real nice and make that pretty texture and of course that little piece of paper that wouldn't come off before wants to bounce around so now I'm back to the other end I'm going to do the same thing rotate the hoop take one stitch that way rotate it again make sure my thread isn't caught on anything or tied in a knot and then I'm going to go back and I hope you can see I should have maybe had a darker thread I can put a darker thread in and we can do a little dark part so you can see the rows more closely but you if you notice I'm going pretty much just right back along the exact same place I went so now if we turn it over it's starting to look a lot prettier because now there are other rows of thread that can hold it up there you can just go to the end of the thread we're going to tip it over now we've done a few rows we're going to turn it over and look at it and now you can see that it has the pretty loops there the three rows together are holding those up so they stand up and they give you that nice um, beady looking texture and we're ready to I'm, I'm going to change thread or show you how to end your thread if you went until the end of the thread you would just all of a sudden 
realized there was no more thread, you would do a stitch and it would and your thread would be the end of your thread would be out here. If you finished an area and you're ready to put a new thread, carefully pull out some of that thread and I like to just use a regular scissors and cut that off and take my needle out and then come back in with these little side hopper scissors and get it right down to the level of the loops and trim that off. There's no knots or anything like that. You just, the thread holds itself in to the weave of the cloth. And then on the back, I can snip that one off too. So then I would just keep going until I filled this area. Now something, can you see through there? Mm -hmm. Something to be aware of with this pattern, and this will be offered first as a class, um, and then the pattern will be for sale on our website after we've done the class for a little bit. But with this pattern, we've added these beads. We just liked that for a little extra sparkle. Um, it takes a little bit of time to sew them on, but you don't have to have them. However, the pattern was designed to have this opening here in the top of the barrel cactus. If you want to put the beads on, because we plan to put beads in there, if you don't want to put beads on your personal project, then you will want to do some punch needle in there so that when you get done, it doesn't have these open holes there. That would be something to, to keep in mind. So, once you get started, you just punch all the places that don't have applique on them. Your pattern will come with the picture and it will show this exact thing and it will tell you what colors to use in each place. Uh, we will also include how many 48 inch lengths of thread we took to fill up different areas so that you have an idea of how much you need. Um, one of the nice things about using 48 inches as a length is you will get, so if you cut yours 48 to 50 inches long, which that's often what they are when you're just kind of rough doing it, you'll end up getting six pieces out of one of these skeins of floss. So then you know that you're, you're going to, how much you're going to need for each floss. All right, so that, uh, I think that's about it. I'm going to punch another little part here real quick with a darker thread so that you can see the space between the rows a little better and then that's all you need to know you just keep going till you're done okay so now I'm going to do this darker thread if we look at the back we can see we're going to stitch in this part and you can see that there's fabric around almost all sides of that piece we don't want to poke punch needle through the fabric for two reasons. One, it's very hard and two, it pick, makes a hole that doesn't heal up. So if you start and it doesn't feel like the needle wants to go through real um, easily, then uh, move over a little bit. You're probably on the fabric. So like right there it doesn't want to go through so I'm going to go over here. Here's another thing is if you had to stop in the middle of doing it you can just lay your, pull the thread out and lay your needle down like that and then when you go back to work just pull the thread back out until you're back down to where it's right up against the surface okay so I'm going to go around this and if I'm not sure that I've gotten too far you know like I'm not sure that I need to have it closer to that stitching line I can turn it over and look and I can see no there it's right along the fabric so that's where I want to be remember to rotate your hoop rather than your needle and if you can and when you're working if you can see the numbers or the other day when my little granddaughter was punching with a different needle, I put a mark with a sharpie so she could see. If you have 
a, a sticker or something, then you can figure out where you want to go. Now I don't want that thread flipping around in my way. Sometimes the threads can wait till the end to be cut off and sometimes you just want them out of the way. So we'll go a little bit more here. I'll put this over this way a little bit. And I'm just going to punch a little bit here with this darker thread so you can makes kind of a satisfying noise it, the poking poking sound but the darker thread will let you see how close together the rows are a little better here's another thing that's useful to know if I just kind of get crazy and go way out here like this and then I realize that I've got a big space and I kind of exaggerated that space um, and I look on the back or the front and I see that there's a gap there the nice thing about punch needle is you can just go back in any place you've missed or any place you want to put more or I could even have switched to a different color of floss there if I wanted to put a little something in there. But you can go in between rows of stitching just as easy as you can go alongside them. So, alright, so now I'm going to pull this out. And you can see just how close together those rows are and you want to be close together because that's what gives you the dense pile that looks so pretty and then you can look at it from the other side and see and you can see that this is a variegated floss and you get some very beautiful effects with the variegated floss and punch needle all right we hope that helps you. We hope we'll see you soon in the class. And um, the, uh, the pattern number for this is 9022, and it will be available on our quiltedfrog.com website after we've taught the classes for a little bit. So sign up for a class, and you can be first.